Hey everyone, so in this video we're on to section 4.4 now and in section 4.4 we talk about spanning sets. So again, what is a spanning set? Well, a spanning set then is just you have a set of vectors and you want to kind of see like what vector space that the set covers and that's that's essentially what a spanning set is. So the videos of this section, they should be broken up into four types of different types of problems and they're all from the textbook and so I'll address one problem at a time from each video and so let's go on to the first problem then this is from your textbook 4410 and this problem is then show that the vectors 1 2 3 comma 3 4 5 comma 4 5 6 does not span R3, but that it does span the subspace in R3, or of R3, consisting of all vectors lying in the plane x minus 2y plus z equals 0. So the point of this problem then is to show that these three vectors right here, okay, that they don't span R3. So what the spanning of vector space means? Well, it means that essentially some linear combination of these three vectors can hit every single vector in R3. Well, they don't, and so that's why they do not span R3. Again, we'll cover this much more in detail in recitation, and if I do give lectures on Fridays, not sure if that's happening, because I'm recording this June 2nd right now. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do, let's say February 2nd. So anyways, back to this problem then. How do we, how do we figure out how to do this problem? Well, how do you show that a set of vectors span something? It's kind of easy kind of simple all we want to do then is throw these guys into a matrix okay and so how are we gonna do that well i'm gonna throw one two three comma four five six uh three four five comma four five six into this matrix one two three three four five four five six all right and what am i trying to show well i'm trying to show that it doesn't span r3 so what I want to do then is that I want to show that, right, that A times 1, 2, 3 plus B times 3, 4, 5 plus C times 4, 5, 6 doesn't equal X, Y, Z, right, for every X, Y, Z, right? That means there's some vectors in R3 because X, Y, Z is your standard three tuple, right? It's a standard vector with three components. And so every X, every Y, every, every Z, so that's what this means for every X, Y, Z, needs to be hit by this linear combination where I take A as a scalar, B as a scalar, and C as a scalar, and I multiply by these three vectors, okay? So what does that mean? Well, if you look at this closely, this right here, you notice that it's actually, this is a matrix, right? This is a system of equations that we're solving. And so on the right hand side, then I wanted to see if it equals X, Y, Z, right? For any X, any Y, any Z. All right. So there's our system of equations. And what do we got to do? Well, we just got to row reduce this thing. All right. And so let's do that then. And if we're going to row reduce to solve for what X, Y, Z can be, right? Then we just got to reduces to row echelon form. And so that matrix reduces to one, three, four. All right, and then so what do I wanna do? I wanna zero out this guy. So this becomes zero, negative two, negative three. And then this becomes x, y minus two x. And then three, five, six, z. All right, likewise, I'm gonna want to zero out this guy this three right here, 
And so how am I going to do that? Well, I'll take 1, 3, 4, x, 0, negative 2, negative 3, y minus 2x, and then 0, 3, 5 minus 9 is negative 4, 6 minus 4 times 2 is negative 8, or 6 minus 12, 12 is negative 6, okay, there we go. And this becomes z minus 3x, right? So I took the first row and I subtracted three times, uh, took the third row and subtracted three times the first row, all right? And now what do we want? Now we want to zero out this guy to get into row echelon form. And so how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna do row three minus two times row two. And so this becomes one, three, four, x, zero, negative two, negative three, y minus two x, and this becomes, notice, 0, 0, 0. And then this becomes z minus 3x minus 2y. And then minus, right, this is minus essentially 2y minus 4x in quantity. And so this down here, and this is supposed to be a 2x, not a 3. Or it is supposed to be a 3x, my bad. All right. This down here, we can simplify it to be z minus 2y plus x, right? Because minus a negative 4x means it's adding it back to 4x. And you'll notice that this, there's no pivot in the third column, right? So what does that mean? It means that if this term is equal to 0, then if, if, we satisfy this equation right here, z minus 2y plus x, then the three vectors above, right, there exists then an a, a b, and a c, such that this linear combination equals our x, y, and z term, all right? That this relationship here actually holds if is satisfied then this equation. And so that shows the second part, right? It shows the second part that if we satisfy x minus 2y plus z equals 0, then the set of vectors, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, it spans that vector space, all right? So it spans all of the vectors lying in this plane, okay? But if then uh, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, and uh, what was it, 4, 5, 6, span, all right? However, if z minus 2y plus x is not equal to 0, then this set does not span. And therefore, because x, y, z, right, if we call up here, x, y, z are just any, any, any vector in R3, because there are certain cases where I can choose x, y, and z such that they don't equal zero in this equation here, that means that this set of vectors may not always hit the, the vector that I choose, right? So if x, y, z does not satisfy my equation, then the set of vectors does not span that vector, and therefore it can't span all of R3, but it does span the subspace, and I can verify that this plane is a subspace. Um, the, the set of vectors spans the subspace, but not all of R3. And so that's how you do it. You just put it into a matrix and you row reduce.